In today's video, I'll be talking about Dr. Dre's What I Eat in a Day. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to check out my resources below. If you want to speak with me, there is a link in the box. I saw this video a few months ago, and I'm not the first person to make a response video. I've seen response videos from Abby Sharp, and I've also seen a response video from uh, The Unnatural Vegan. And the reason why these What I Eat in a Day videos by Dr. Dre have gotten so many responses is because there are reasons to be concerned here. Dr. Dre is an MD, she's a dermatologist. Um, I don't know where she's based, but I'm sure she's a very knowledgeable person. But when it comes to her diet, there are some things that concern me and remind me of my days of orthorexia. I don't know her personally, I don't know what's going on. Maybe she's really healthy, maybe I'm seeing things, but I work with people with these kinds of issues and I've had these issues myself. And when I saw the video, I thought, oh my. As a reminder, I am not a dietitian. I am not an MD. I'm not going to tell you what to eat and what not to eat. And I'm not making this video because I want to mock her and I can't say conclusively what's going on. I don't know her. I'm making this video because there are certain lessons that we can learn here. I'm also making it because I'm genuinely concerned. So what does Dr. Dre eat in a day? Let's take a look. Hey guys, so I'm back with another so just initial impressions here. She looks very pasty and a lot of anorexics, orthorexics, they always look pale, pasty. I remember in my day, I look at old photos and I didn't look good. I didn't have that, that glow. I didn't have my tan because I was just so weak and anemic. She also has a very gaunt face, which is indicative of orthorexia or undernourishment. And you'll see later in the video, she has no meat on her bones. She's very thin. So I don't know if she's just not lifting enough or maybe she's unnaturally skinny. But that's just an initial impression. Let's see what she actually eats. Oh, I shared this in my early morning routine video and I got a lot of questions on it. But I start every morning with a big old thing of water like... She uses Natural Calm and I know some people who use that with various levels of success. But doesn't it make sense to take magnesium a couple hours before you go to bed, not in the morning. I'm just saying, if, if magnesium helps you sleep, you should take it at night, not necessarily in the morning. Just a thought. Honestly, it helped me cut back on drinking diet soda and I no longer drink diet soda or diet Coke. There is the first clue of orthorexia. So she has this habit of drinking diet soda. This is an old dieter's trick. Consume a bunch of carbonated, uh, artificially sweetened beverages like diet Coke and pretend that you're full. When you drink it, it distends your stomach and it sends a message to your brain that you're not hungry. A lot of disordered eaters drink diet soda. A lot of them drink it in excess. They don't want to eat. They don't want to eat not because they're not hungry, but because they don't want the calories and so they drink diet sodas. Trust me, I've been there. I have been a chronic diet soda consumer. But just because she drinks diet soda doesn't mean she has orthorexia. So let's keep going here. Now, you guys know I am a coffee addict. Okay, so a couple things there. First, she says that she drinks a lot of coffee. Just like the diet soda, that's another dieter's trick. Drink coffee, just drink coffee. And she probably sweetens it with artificial sweeteners. Although I don't see that in this video, so I can't say for sure. But then she uses the word addict. Why is she consuming so much coffee? Is she drinking it because she likes it? Or is she drinking it because it's another diet aid? instant coffee. I love the Four Sigmatic instant coffees. What is the big deal about Four Sigmatic? Every YouTuber seems to be promoting this. It's like the the built bar. I see built bars all over the place now, or I've seen Four Sigmatic for a while now. I don't know what's so amazing about it. Just as a disclaimer, I have never tried it, so maybe it really is amazing, but it just seems really popular among millennial YouTubers, especially the ones in the health space. But this is another theme, buying really expensive products. Four Sigmatic is more expensive, I'm assuming, than Maxwell or Folgers. You're going to see a lot of expensive products and that's really indicative of orthorexia and also disordered eating because you can't just eat regular food. You have to eat stuff that is really specialized and you can only find at Trader Joe's or Sprouts or Whole Foods or some specialty market. This is the first time in this video that she buys something really special, but it's not the last. Days that I wake up at 4 a.m. And as I told you guys in my early morning routine video, I don't really feel like eating that early in the morning. So I 
There's another tell. I don't feel like eating in the morning. A lot of disordered eaters tell themselves this. They say, I don't feel like eating. I'm not really hungry. They convince themselves that they don't like food. They convince, they convince themselves that they don't want to eat. There's always a reason not to eat. Oh, it's too early to eat. I'm going to do intermittent fasting or, or whatever. You hear all of these excuses and they start telling themselves these stories. They need a reason not to eat. And so they'll say something like, oh, I'm just not hungry in the morning. So I'm going to do, drink my Four Sigmatic coffee. Skipping breakfast, that's fine. If you're truly not hungry in the morning, then don't eat. If you want the benefits of intermittent fasting or like fasting for 18 hours, go for it. But don't pretend like that it's 10.30 or 11 and you're not hungry. Most people are hungry by the late morning. Often we'll take my B12 supplement at this point. Or Remember, she is vegan, so she has to supplement with B12. We're also going to see nutritional yeast in a couple of minutes here. That's also another vegan source of uh, B12, but most vegans and a lot of non-vegans uh, have to supplement with B12. It's hard to get unless you eat a lot, bunch of, I don't know, calf's liver, you're not going to get a lot of B12. So if you're not supplementing with a B12 supplement, consider it. Sometimes in the morning this early, I will have a green smoothie. The green smoothie, of course. That's exactly what you have in the morning. It just makes you so warm. And she, she launched this video in the winter time. She's still having a green smoothie. I don't know about you, but I don't want a green smoothie on a chilly morning. It's like the last thing that I want. I want something warm. But green smoothies and all of this emphasis on super healthy food is another tell. Instead of having, let's say, oats and a banana, just something really pedestrian. She has to have a green smoothie. And that green smoothie probably has 200 calories and costs $5 in ingredients. I just steam them uh, or boil them in a little bit of low sodium vegetable broth. Now it's low sodium vegetable broth. Why low sodium? You need sodium. Unless you're on a renal diet or a kidney diet, you don't need to reduce your salt intake. Salt is good. Okay, that's where we get the word salary. Okay, they paid people in salt because salt was good. Your body needs salt. So why is she choosing low sodium vegetable broth? So I end up eating one of these for brunch, if you will, or breakfast. I know that sounds odd. And then the other one I end up eating for a lunch. Let me tell you what's in this jar. I didn't include the whole clip. You know, I, I want to avoid copyright strikes. So it was spinach at the base. And then she had some nutritional yeast. Then she had some black beans. Then she had some hemp hearts. And then she put apple cider vinegar on top. And then she topped it with some cherry tomatoes. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Uh, postpone meal time later than you'd like because you got busy at work. Uh, I also take some mandarin oranges and hashtag team prune. All and then she had one ounce of nuts and four clementines. And that's what she has the whole day. I mean, she's a dermatologist. I mean, that's a pretty demanding job if you're seeing, you know, 10, 15, 20 patients. Maybe she's not doing patient care and she just stays at home the whole day. I don't know. But it seems woefully insufficient. These two salads in a mason jar, clementines, and just a handful of nuts. Thing for breakfast and lunch, and I kind of like having a savory breakfast, but I also bring a lot of snacks. Again, here's another specialty food. That bag of jungle peanuts or whatever probably costs five times more than regular peanuts that you can find in the bulk section. You can get peanuts in the bulk section for four or five dollars a pound. That's probably like twenty dollars a pound. What is so great about jungle peanuts? But this is indicative of disordered eaters. They have a very specialized, very regimented diet. They have to go to this grocery store and get this brand and this flavor. They can't just buy regular Costco food. Although I will concede she did buy some of these products at Costco. So I have to give her credit for that. I do salt the food, but I use sea vegetables. Just gives things a little bit of an added mineral kick. Here's another specialty food. That bag probably costs four or five dollars and has no calories in it. It's just seaweed. Don't get me wrong, I like seaweed. I used to put seaweed on my salad. I used to make it all wet and I don't know, it's, it's pretty good. But again, it's expensive. Yes, you're getting some iodine or whatever, but you're not getting any sustenance in it. It's just another really expensive green vegetable. This is my little salad dressing concoction. I just put on that Frontier Co-op pizza seasoning onto the salad, and then I throw in a little apple cider vinegar into the mix. Here's dinner. She steamed some kale and added some low sodium vegetable broth and added mushrooms. No protein, no fat, no flavor, no salt. It seems like a very, very boring diet. I'm in favor of boring diets 
as long as they give you what you need, as long as they have a good mix of fat, protein, carbs, and salt. For her, it's all about the vitamins and the minerals, but you can't sustain yourself on vitamins and minerals. You have to have calories. You have to have fat. You have to have protein. And this just doesn't meet those criteria. Uh, so that goes in uh, a little bit more low sodium or no salt added veggie broth. Here's her salad. It's a concoction of greens, chopped up radishes, and then she puts on pizza seasoning and adds apple cider vinegar. Again, very little protein, very little flavor, almost no fat. I think she added hemp hearts to this one. But again, pizza seasoning and apple cider vinegar. Clearly, she is trying to keep the calories very low. There's no oil. A lot of vegans don't do oil. And I understand it's, it's a lot of fat and a very small volume of food. But oil also helps with absorption and improves flavor and improves texture. And some oils that are high in monosaturated fats are really good for you. You can add so much more to a salad. You can add corn, you can add beans, you can add diced tomatoes, you can add a protein source like shrimp or salmon. She's vegan because she doesn't eat that fine. But even if you're vegan, you can add tempeh, tofu. They now have impossible meats that you can add. You can add nuts. You can do whatever you want with a salad. This is just a pile of vegetables with some apple cider vinegar. Vegetable broth to the pan and then a whole bag of the rice cauliflower that I get from Costco in the freezer section. See, I told you she went to Costco. But why is she using riced cauliflower? Why is she not just using brown rice? or quinoa or some other grain. If you're trying to lose weight, but you wanna have some of your favorite dishes, you can use rice cauliflower instead of brown rice. Okay, it cuts calories and it tastes, or at least it feels just like regular rice. I can see the purpose, but I don't think she needs to lose weight. Why is she cutting out whole grains? It's one thing to be vegan, but it's another thing to cut out whole grains and fats. Again, I'm seeing a trend here. Everything is low calorie and she's always choosing low calorie options. The diet soda, the coffee, the rice cauliflower, the salad with no dressing, no oil. Do you see the trend here? Almost like a sticky rice. Then I added some fresh cracked pepper and here's the protein source. I've really been loving this ground lupin bean flour. At least she's adding a protein source, but what is this? Is grand lupin what is grand lupin there are so many simple protein sources even if you're a vegan you can just open a can of beans put the can of beans in the salad and there's your source of protein you can add tofu you can get a protein powder grand lupin how many stores sell this stuff and again it's this emphasis on really specialized really expensive foods when you have eliminated so many foods from your diet you have to resort to these really niche products like Grand Lupin, that to me is a sign of orthorexia. Like here, I wear this little Classy Pal adult bib. It just keeps my shirt clean. I do. Okay, I hate judging bodies, but I'm just telling you what I see. Does that look like somebody who is really vibrant? Does that look like somebody who could run five miles? Does that look like somebody who could deadlift her body weight? I have to be careful here because I hate to judge physiques, but that's more or less what I looked like when I was really underweight. The gaunt face, the pale skin, no meat in my bones. It doesn't look healthy. And why would we expect anything else when all she has is a pile of vegetables for dinner? Is dessert any better? Let's take a look. The whole thing. Now, this is my dessert. I have been really into making my own soy milk yogurt in my Kosari multi cooker. It has a yogurt making function. And before, when I was. A so, dessert is soy yogurt, and then she's gonna add some honeydew, and she sweetens it with this non sugar sweetener. It's probably stevia or something. Again, she's using low calorie options, very expensive products, very specialized products. Instead of just using sugar, which is super cheap. Not super healthy, but super cheap. Instead of just buying slightly sweetened yogurt, she's going to buy the plain yogurt and add this a few drops of sweetener. This is what I used to do. I used to sweeten everything because I never had real sugar. I used to sweeten my tea. I used to sweeten my protein shakes. I used to sweeten, I don't know, think about it and I could sweeten everything. 
Why not just add a small spoonful of sugar, mix it, it's probably 30 calories. But instead of doing that, she adds this really expensive product to make it sweet, to make it palatable. And I also, okay, this is, a, this is an amazing little find. You can thank me later. Another trend that I'm seeing is this emphasis on superfoods. That bag probably was $10. I don't, I don't know. I can't imagine what her grocery bill is. She's buying all of these non-sugar sweeteners, pomegranate chips, uh, great lupin, whatever that is. And then she's buying all of these vegetables. So even if she's eating 1,500, 1,800 calories a day, she's spending a ton of money. This is not a sustainable diet for most people. Most people have, what, 10 or $15 a day to feed themselves in this country. She's probably spending way more than this. If you wanna eat healthy, you can do so on the cheap, but you have to eat regular foods. You have to eat rice, you have to eat beans, you have to eat quinoa, you have to eat you know, tofu. You might have to buy a sweetened version of something to make it palatable. You might have to use regular table sugar, but she doesn't do that. Everything she buys is super specialized. And this emphasis on superfoods concerns me too. I don't believe there are any superfoods. I think some foods are better. I think pomegranates and blueberries and spinach and kale, I think all of those are better than fries and chicken tenders. Some foods should be eaten more than others, I get that. But there's no such thing as a superfood that can give you super health. I'm always skeptical of claims like this, so whenever I see something that says superfood, I'm immediately skeptical. It's Swerve Chocolate Cake Mix. This is a no sugar baking mix. Of course, it has no sugar. So just like the vegetable broth that had no salt, this has no sugar, it's ketogenic. It's like we're willing to pay more for products that don't have anything. If it says free on it, it's more expensive. It's a paradox. But again, she could have bought regular baking mix for a fraction of the cost, but she got the stuff that doesn't have anything in it. Who knows how they made this thing? Why no added sugar? Why no grains? Why no gluten? There's nothing in this diet. It also calls for oil, but I find that it comes out way too greasy if you use oil because of the coconut and almond flours. I used pureed squ- It's not that it's too greasy, it just has too many calories. That's why she doesn't have the oil. So instead of using oil, she uses pureed squash. Now that could work if it has the same texture and you could save yourself a lot of calories, but that's exactly why she's doing it. Instead of following traditional recipes with very simple ingredients, she has to puree squash, who knows how much that costs, because she doesn't want to use the oil. This diet is expensive, it's very specialized, it's not sustainable for most people. It also lacks a lot of flavor, but most importantly, it lacks a lot of nutrition. I'm not seeing a lot of protein, I'm not seeing a lot of fat, I'm not seeing a lot of salt, I'm not seeing a lot of variety here. Fruits and vegetables are great, pomegranates are great, spinach is great, but you need more than that. But I hope you guys enjoy this What I Eat In A Day video. Oh, I sure did. So what did we see in this video? We saw a lot of superfoods, we saw a lot of specialty foods, we saw a lot of expensive foods. We saw a lot of deficiencies in protein and fat and salt. We saw a lot of vitamins and minerals, but not a lot of calories. We saw really expensive meals that most people are probably not going to be satisfied with. Does Dr. Dre have orthorexia or is she a disordered eater? I don't know. Maybe she's not. I hope she's healthy, I hope she's vibrant. She knows her body better than anybody else. I trust that she's doing what she thinks is best for her. All I'm saying is that there are reasons for concern here and that this diet is probably not going to work for a lot of people. And we saw a bunch of foods that have to be bought at a very high price at very specific places. And we saw a lot of specialty items too. I had never heard of some of the items that she bought. These are not traditional staples. You can't walk into a regular grocery store and buy these. You have to know what you're looking for, and then once you find it, you have to pay a premium for it. Again, I don't know Dr. Dre. I can only tell you what I see, but a lot of the behaviors that I had when I was orthorexic, I see here. I hope you found this video educational and entertaining. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the resources below. If you liked this video, I'm sure you'll like one of the other videos that you see on the screen. Click one of them, and I'll see you there. And as always, eat the way you're designed to.